Who is known to be omniscient and all-knowing? Who issues judgment and wears the cap of Mithra with the ball on the end of it symbolizing rulership of the world? Welcome to Revealing the Truth. I'm John Fisher and with me is David Brett. And in the beginning of our program today, I asked the question, who is known as omniscient and uh, all-knowing, who issues judgment, and who wears the cap of Mithra, um, symbolizing, with the ball on the end of it, symbolizing mm -hmm. the rulership of the world? And probably most of you answered Santa Claus. Sounds like Santa Claus. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, that is who I'm referring to. And uh, but who's Mithra? Mm. Well, it turns out that Mithra is a Zoroastrian deity of the sun um, who wears that same cap. And the ball on the end of that cap uh, symbolizes his rulership over the world. Mm. Zoroastrian, like yeah. an astrologer or... Soothsayer? Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, he's actually a Persian deity oh. that uh, became uh, widely known uh, in Greek and Latin, or I should say Roman uh, society. Mm -hmm. Became one of the, the pantheist, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the deities of pantheists, uh, for, you know, commonly known as pagans. But mm -hmm. basically, pagan entity was a, a viable religion uh, in the and people would have their own their household deities, the city deities, the state deities, and mm -hmm. the deities over the deities. Yeah. Well, I was reading in uh, the Erdman's uh, Bible Dictionary recently, and it said, indeed, the background of many observances such as Christmas, Epiphany, and Ember is pagan. Mm -hmm. Just a simple statement of fact, like, yeah, we all know it. Well, I mean, you have yeah. to consider the source of <laughs> these traditions of man. Uh, Back in, the th back in the third century, 325, uh, Constantine basically wanted to unite his empire, which went all the way from um, the, the British Isles, Spain and France and um, Italy, Greece and Turkey now, what we call Turkey, but Syria and, and uh, Palestine, Egypt and all, you know, the northern uh, nations of Africa. He wanted to unite that ho his whole empire into one religion. Mm -hmm. and. The predominant religion was pantheism, uh, many deities, and um, and also uh, the the belief in the Messiah was was uh, growing very strong as well at this time, mm -hmm. and so he decided to combine them all together. Mm -hmm. He syncretized a religion from all of the other pagan uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, doctrines and deities and yeah. came up with Christianity or oh, Catholicism. And the word that comes to mind is ecumenicalism, mm -hmm. which is happening today even. We see among uh, different groups. Right. They're accepting of this, everyone. This is politically correct mm -hmm. to accept everyone's religion as, you know, well, that's what you believe and that's fine. There's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. I would submit for your consideration, however, that the scripture uh, <laughs> presents a different uh, faith. Yeah, well, you know, the Apostle Paul, when dealing with Timothy and Titus, who were establishing assemblies, mm -hmm. uh, doctrine, doctrine, doctrine was emphasized again and again from Scripture. Mm -hmm. It's to be emphasized, proper doctrine, not just, you know, any any type of belief. Right. And so, uh, this is a little different. I mean, that's uh, all through the Scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to present some Scripture today that will just, it, I mean, it should. <laughs> Um, clarify you know, what how wrong it is to be honoring uh, days like Christmas and Easter and mm -hmm. Valentine's Day and you know perhaps even Thanksgiving. You know this, if yeah. it's not in the Scripture, if it's something that is celebrated outside of that, then. But can't we have tradition? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on what you mean by tradition. I mean, uh, we can't. I mean, how do you get out of having a tradition of some sort or another? I mean, we all have traditions. Uh, our tradition for this show is to not dress up in fancy suits and to be as casual as possible in, in doing that. Yeah. But when we, when we're in worship, we we tend to wear um, clothing that is 
Uh, considered more appropriate, more mm -hmm. respectful of the day of Sabbath. Yeah. Well, the reason I bring up tradition is because I was also looking at Holman, uh, the Holman New Testament commentary, and it has this to, to say. Now, now think of uh, you know how people like to justify themselves mm -hmm. or reason away. Right. Uh, listen to this. In the church, we have many traditions too. Some of them, such as the special ways in which a congregation celebrates Christmas or Easter, help us to draw closer to, and I'm inserting Yahweh here, mm -hmm. but it says, even though we may not be able to define or support the practice from Scripture mm -hmm. by using the words traditional and contemporary to talk about the types of worship, we acknowledge that a good bit of what we do has developed from years of practice. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, it's um, it's yeah, open justification. It's, it's amazing to us who read the scripture, understanding what Yahweh wants us to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Yahshua condemned certain people. Who did he condemn? The Pharisees. And why did he condemn them? I mean, he was. They were of his people, right? They made up their own ideas of how to worship. Exactly. They created laws that became so traditional, and they were in so in. in encamped, you might say, around these traditions, mm -hmm. that they neglected the law of Yahweh. And right. that, that's Yahshua's complaint. That's why he called them, um, you know, a brood of vipers, mm -hmm. snakes. <laughs> yeah, because they went against his father's instructions. Absolutely. So, you know, he was, he was emphasizing what his mm -hmm. father wanted. Um, right. You know, in, in Scripture it talks about, well, Deuteronomy 12, verse 30, just for an example. Mm -hmm says, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. He's talking about the other nations, the pagan mm -hmm. ways. Right. He says, after that they be destroyed from uh, before thee, that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? <laughs> Even so, I will do likewise. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not do so under Yahweh, uh, unto Yahweh thy Elohim. For every abomination to Yahweh which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters that they have burnt in the fire to their gods, whatever so I command you, observe and do it, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want to be reminded of <laughs> you know, these practices that the nations have done. He right. wants his ways done. Well, reading that verse to many people, they would simply respond, well, you know, that was for the Jews. He's the God of the Old Testament. I've, I've heard preachers use that phrase. Well, why does his son say, live by every word that proceeds out of his father's mouth then? Right. In fact, he doesn't just say father, he says Yahweh. Um, you know, because he's, he's... Yeah, do you want an answer to that question? He's quoting, he's <laughs> actually quoting from the Old Testament. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Do you want an answer to that? Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm sure our, well, our you, listeners you, actually, would like to hear. <laughs> actually, you answered that question earlier when you said justification. We oh, want to sure. justify what we believe. Yeah. Because uh, from what we're presenting, if someone who is following the traditions of Christianity or <coughs> other religions, mm -hmm. um, what we're saying is contrary to that. The, the, the faith that's described in the scripture is set apart from the world. It is op it is opposite to what the world teaches, mm -hmm. and so what is that? What would that require of someone? Well, they'd have to give up Sunday worship. They'd have to give up Christmas and Easter and all the other celebrations that are merely traditions of men. Well, why not? Why why Sunday? Why give up Sunday? Well, what is that? <laughs> the, the day of <laughs> Sabbath that that the Messiah. Uh, worshipped on because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was a set apart day. Yeah. I mean, he's the master of the Sabbath. He what Sabbath seventh, are we talking about? Yeah, the seventh day of the week. Absolutely. Which is unchanged since that time. I mean, scholarship goes back and the law, investigates, and they say it hasn't changed. The law of Yahweh is forever. Mm -hmm. And for for those who are maybe listening to this broadcast, we hope you'll stay with us because we have a lot more to explain. It is not you who we condemn. It is the the religions, the traditions in this world that we're looking at. If you saw Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of the Christ, then you no doubt heard in the Aramaic the true name of the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. If you listen to a foreign radio station, you may not understand what is said, but when a president's name is mentioned, it will be understood, because names do not change from one language to another. To learn more, request your free mini-study, How the Savior's Name Was Changed. Write to YAIY, 2963 County Road 233, Kingdom City, Missouri 65262, or visit us online at yaiy.org. 
You may also call toll-free 1-877-642-4101. Now, we, we know that uh, those of you who follow the traditions uh, of man uh, and related to your religion uh, do so with the intent of, um, of doing well, of doing good. Mm -hmm. we, we, underst we understand that, and it's not you that we condemn. Um, it's the shepherds that are teaching false doctrine uh, who should know otherwise. That I, I don't want to say that we're condemning, but... Um, it, it's not good. It's, it, the scripture says that if, if you're a preacher listening to this, that if you teach people against Yahweh, then you yourself will be condemned. So it's not in our hands. We don't have the power or the will or the desire mm -hmm. to condemn anyone. Yeah. Well, scripture talks about working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Right. How fearful and, and trembling should we be if we're promoting something that we know is not correct and true according to scripture? Yeah. If we're teaching fanciful uh, things of man and presenting that as somehow religious, <clears throat> right. You know, that's a it's a false way. And, and and I understand the idea of you know of teaching kids about Santa Claus as a way of preparing kids for a belief in in someone who is omniscient and all powerful who does make judgments, mm -hmm. and will um, and will base those judgments on works. I mean, it's a preparation. I do understand that. However, uh, it has grown into something that is much bigger than that uh, in this world with its commercialism and its connection to a, a religious holiday, which, you know, December 25th, mm -hmm. just four days after the winter solstice, a time set aside by uh, pantheists to honor the sun deity. Mm -hmm. uh, and that includes Zeus and Mithra, includes uh, Nimrod and Tammuz. Uh, these are deities that were very powerful you know, amongst uh, pagans in, in ancient society and exist as well today. Well, here's, a, here's an instance in the New American Commentary it says of the Messiah's birth, uh, Yahshua's birth itself, of course I'm inserting the proper name, but Yahshua's birth itself almost certainly did not occur on December 25th. Mm -hmm. This date became attached to the celebration of Christmas later because it coincided with a Roman holiday mm -hmm. known as Saturnalia. Yeah, right, which is a, a dedication uh, to uh, you know, false deities, mm -hmm. and if you if you look at the scripture, we're not going to go into a lot of detail about that right now. But if you look in scripture and follow the the birth of John, uh, whose father was Zechariah, was a priest in the temple, and if you look back to the divisions of the priests, you can you would be able to identify that John was uh, basically uh, conceived at the time of Pentecost. Six months later is when Mary went to Elizabeth. And, uh, and told her that she was conceived by the Holy, you know, mm -hmm. a child by the Holy Spirit. And nine months later, would put it about the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe strongly that that uh, the Messiah was born on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is based on the biblical calendar, not our calendar. Mm -hmm. So it happens at a different time every year. But within, but on the fifteenth day of the seventh month of the, of the biblical calendar, it is there in Scripture. Uh, without doubt, in, at least in my mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back to traditions and looking at this Santa Claus um, who flies through the air with reindeers and, you know, uh, maybe he is reminiscent of the prince of the air, you know, because he's all-powerful, all-knowing, all that. Mm -hmm. Let me read from uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you, he made, uh, Yahshua, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. For me, this is a clear delineation of what it means to honor Santa Claus on mm -hmm. Christmas and to honor, to honor Christmas as well. It being um, a, a pantheist um, holiday. 
essentially. Yeah, well, I guess we could say polytheistic. I mean, it, it's yeah, part of the... Yeah, pan means poly, means many. Yeah. So. yeah so, or all covering. Mm -hmm. So, um, in Deuteronomy 28, <clears throat> Yahweh says, uh, or the scripture says, Yahweh will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of heart. Now, what are the circumstances uh, under which he would do that? <clears throat> Well, he explains in, in an earlier verse in, in uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15. It says, But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to observe carefully all His commandments and His statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And he lists, you know, pages basically of mm -hmm. curses that will come upon people. And um, amongst the num these numerous <coughs> curses are uh, found in uh, Deuteronomy 28, beginning at verse 25. And I want you to hear this and understand what, what Yahweh, the creator of the universe, is saying to us. Yahweh will cause you to be defeated by your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And you shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcasses shall be food for all the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and no one shall frighten them away. Yahweh will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with tumors, with scabs, and with the itch from which you cannot be healed. Yahweh will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of heart. This is troubling. Mm -hmm. uh, if we, especially if we look at... Um, <laughs> In my mind, I picture the soldiers who are overseas fighting, who are giving their lives, who lay in the fields and are victims of, of the wild animals and birds. Mm -hmm. That um, we, are, we have been defeated in many ways in this country. There are diseases upon, you know, about which we cannot heal. I believe the curse is in process and uh, it's not gonna get better unless, as scripture says, um, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and essentially be obedient to my laws, mm -hmm. I will, he says, he will bless us. And there are many blessings. Um, yeah, it's just like when Jonah went to the city of Nineveh, which mm -hmm. was the capital of Assyria back at that time, mm -hmm. and the, the Assyrians were bloodthirsty and, and fero ferocious against right. Israel. Right. And Jonah didn't want to have anything to do with giving them a message because he didn't want to be around them, so he took off in another direction. But he got turned back around by Yahweh, went and told them what was going to happen. And they said, Every man, woman, even the beast, let us humble ourselves before mm -hmm. the Almighty. And basically, they, they, they did this repentance. They right. stopped doing what they were doing, and, and they changed. And so I, I truly <coughs> believe there is hope for this nation, for all the people in the world who, who want peace. Honor Yahweh. When you come back, we're going to talk more about the blessings. The appointed times, or feasts, of Leviticus chapter 23 were kept in the Old Testament, were kept in the New, and will be kept in the coming Kingdom. The question is, why would we not keep them now? To learn more, request your free in-depth study entitled, Biblical Holy Days. Write to YAIY 2963 County Road 233, Kingdom City, Missouri 65262, or visit online at yaiy.org. You may also call toll-free 1-877-642-4101. Earlier we um, talked about how a lot of people will dismiss what we're saying because it, it was, after all, it was for the Jews, it was for Israel, and Israel is dead. Well, I, I'm here to, <laughs> to affirm that Israel is not dead. In fact, um, it is true that the Messiah came basically to unite all Israel. If you look at James, who did he write to? I mean, here's James in the middle of this uh, Jewish nation. Mm -hmm. He's writing to the 12 tribes of Israel. Who does Peter write to in, in the, his first uh, epistle? He writes to the, um, 
pilgrims of the dispersion. What dispersion is that? That's the dispersion of the house of Israel. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 15, who does the Messiah say he has come for? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in chapter 10 of Matthew, who does he send his disciples to? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. He came to uh, go into the world. And, and it is actually true. I mean, the, I, I firmly believe that Christianity holds a piece of this puzzle. They worship the Messiah. They, they're doing it in ways that are by the tradition of man. It is those who believe in the Messiah who at this point in time reject the law of Yahweh and those who hold fast to the law of Yahweh in principle who reject the Messiah who are going to come together and when, in, in that day we will have the law of Yahweh and we will have the Messiah of Yahweh together. Mm -hmm. um, these laws are not for past times. The idea of dispensationalism, the idea that one covenant uh, uh, causes the other one to be done away with is absolutely wrong. We are Israel who believe in the Messiah and who believe in the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And I, want to, I don't want to let you go without letting you know of the many blessings that comes from being obedient to Yahweh. We can even think back to Nineveh and how Nineveh had repented mm -hmm. and they were, they were therefore blessed because the, the punishment that was coming for them, <laughs> Yahweh relented mm -hmm. and He had mercy on these wicked people. Right. Right. They were wicked. They, they were Assyrians. This was the capital of Assyria. <laughs> if anyone should have been wiped off the you know, map, it should have been them at that time, but right. it, they weren't. Right. And, and you know, it, it, is, it is true that all human beings are wicked. We are of the flesh. We, we will do things for our own good and not for others. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's sobering, especially when you, when you know that um, Yahweh basically has given us power over our, our salvation. Because He says, as you forgive, so you will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. and, f and forgiveness really means not hurting another person, yeah. not doing harm to another. So if we refrain from hurting others who have offended us, like the Messiah teaches, mm -hmm. then Yahweh will not offend us. <laughs> yeah. he, will, he will bless us. And we're not condemning those that, that uh, have these practices that mm -hmm. are kind of, well, they're blinded because of the tradition they've been taught right. a certain way. And um, it, I, I think it's best that we are understood as teaching against the teachings, right. not against the people. I mean, the people have the opportunity to, to change and to and be blessed, and, and you know, ultimately that judgment falls in the hands of, of Yahweh and His Son. Right. So. Yeah, we are not to condemn. Yeah. Doing so would bring condemnation on us. Mm -hmm. okay. Deuteronomy 28, uh, beginning at verse 9. Actually, I want to begin at uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, where he says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, to observe carefully all His commandments, which I command you today, that Yahweh your Elohim will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. And he, and he then enumerates many, many blessings. Read that in chapter 28. He also declares in uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, beginning at verse 9, Yahweh will establish you as a holy people. Holy means set apart to Himself, just as He has sworn to you, if, so this is conditional, mm -hmm. it's not once saved, always saved, it is conditional. If you keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim and walk in His ways, just as the Messiah did. I added that little part in the end. <laughs> Verse 10, Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Yahweh, and they shall be afraid of you. The fear means respect as mm -hmm. well. And Yahweh will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land of which Yahweh swore to your fathers to give you. Yahweh will open to you His good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in a season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Mm, how different mm -hmm. is that today? Mm -hmm. Verse 13, And Yahweh will make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be above only and not be beneath if 
you heed the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you today, and be careful to observe them. You shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. How do we serve other deities? Well, we follow the ways of the worshipers of those deities. Mm -hmm. And how, are, how is that? Well, December 25th is a set apart, is a holy day to pantheism. Mm -hmm. uh, Easter, um, do you know who Easter is? Ishtar. Ishtar, mm -hmm. Ishtar uh, the goddess of fertility. And um, how do they worship the goddess of fertility? Well, by creating, uh, by procreating in temples. Yeah. Okay. And fertility rites. Fertility rites, mm -hmm. and um, those children uh, born of that union are sacrificed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you know, there's many things that are horrible to even uh, understand. Sure. And you know, I imagine a lot of our listeners are, are you know, some of them are more, more likely interested in what more there can mm -hmm. be uh, on, on the subject of, of Christmas. Uh, there's a mini study that we have Is Christmas a Biblical Observance? Uh, we just uh, produced a magazine, November, December 2010, uh, the YAIY Beacon. Uh, also, a couple of different articles on the day of Christmas and, and what, uh, what is associated with it. So there's a number of things in there that uh, we have not touched upon that goes further in depth. Uh, for investigative purposes to see, you know, is this true or not? Mm -hmm. We should be like Bereans. We should study these things out to see whether or not it's true. And if it's true, we should hold on to it and move forward with it. If it's false, we should discard it and, and leave it behind. Absolutely. And we also have literature that talks about the, the days that Yahweh has appointed to meet with us. And mm -hmm. so we have a, a, a pamphlet on that as well. All of our literature is free. We yeah. don't sell what, what Yahweh has given to us. Freely we receive and freely we give. Paul says some things as well to his uh, student, Titus. I'll read this. To the pure all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know Yahweh, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. And finally, I want to read uh, the, the final part in the book of Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. May Yahweh bless you.